AIF stands for American Indian Foundation, one of America's leading Indian foundations which has been hosting the William J. Clinton Fellowship programs for many years. This program gives U.S. graduates a unique opportunity to go to India and serve the country for a period of 10 months. It is definitely a commitment, but when you come back, you're a changed person. Well, let's hear more about this program from the fellows themselves. How did you hear about this fellowship program and why did you want to organize this event today? Thank you. Um, so I heard about AIF because I've been volunteering with them for about four or five years now and the fellowship is one of the hardest fellowships in the country to get into, about a 2% acceptance rate. And I wanted to give back to these people that have given so much to the organization and to India, a 10-month program at different nonprofits in India. And once they come back, they are amazing in whatever field that they get into. Um, and I wanted to create a, an alumni network of Clinton Fellows so that they could learn from each other and tell each other about their stories.
happy young professional chapter folks and a big clap for them they did a fantastic job last saturday and raised thirty thousand dollars for us uh, so give them a hand folks uh, thank you dave for hosting us this evening and how generous of you we've got some lovely wine here for everybody and there's food at the back uh, but most importantly we have um, our service corps uh, alum our clinton fellows now uh, alumni uh, i think we span back to about a uh, six seven years here today i think we have about 20 of you uh, um, give everybody a big hand guys these guys have been phenomenal they've spent um, it's great to see you guys here today. They've spent um, 10 months uh, of, uh, you know, their um, careers in India. Uh, we are working with a nonprofit on the ground, and AIF uh, sends, uh, we do, um, you know, we um, sort of uh, reach out. We uh, uh, get about 250 applicants for about 20 people or 25 people that we send to India every year. Uh, it mirrors the 10 months of the, the college year. And um, you guys are just uh, phenomenal ambassadors uh, for us. Uh, I think you've, uh, I'm sure, it's sort of been a life-changing experience for all of you. And uh, we're just uh, delighted to have you here, and we'd love to hear some of your stories. You can actually trace the trajectory of when I did the fellowship to what I'm doing right now. And, um, and it is life changing, it was life changing, and I'm not one to make overblown statements, so that's actually very true for me. Uh, I was working at Human Rights Watch before I went on the fellowship, and I had lived in India, I'd studied in India, and I'd, I'd, um, I'd lived in India as a student, but I had never worked there. And I was a grant writer for Human Rights Watch, and I felt I liked my job, but I kind of didn't feel very connected to, um, it, you know, it's policy level work, you're kind of removed from the ground or being in the field, and I felt like I needed to connect a little bit to, to kind of understand what my next steps were going to be. So I applied for the fellowship in 2006, I, I got it, and I moved to Delhi where I worked with an organization called uh, Action India, which does work with women in Delhi's urban slums. Um, and it's very grassroots, it's very much about campaign building, it's very different from the work I was doing at Human Rights Watch. And while I speak some Hindi, I didn't speak it so well that I could, you know, kind of do one-on-one -on -one interviews in the field, but I ended up being, I think, um, beneficial to the organization because I could kind of think about organizational structure and help them with their fundraising, and these were things that I, that I could bring that they, you know, didn't really have despite there being a 30-year-old organization at the time. So I, I felt great because I successfully raised some grants, and, um, you know, I, I had a, a really kind of pivotal experience there, but what I think ended up happening is that I became really familiar with the NGO community in Delhi, and I took it upon myself to learn more about human rights NGOs in the country, which was my interest. Like, the way that you learn how to really care about the world around you, and I, I think I learned that from my colleagues at Prava in Delhi, which is where I was placed, was the only fellow placed in Delhi that year. Um, I. And I think even just on a personal level, like I fell in love for the first time when I was in India. You can awe at that. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Are, he's now married, not to me. But, <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> but the, the fellowship was, I think, in that vein, um, so instrumental to, to who I am today. Um, I, I learned so much about how NGOs work. Um, I learned so much about how communities rally around each other and are formed and, and really make an impact um, and how you care about people and, and reach your hand out when in need. Um, I was very sick during my fellowship experience. Um, and I, I, to this day, I'm just so grateful for the people who really stuck their neck out for me when they didn't need to. Um, and so I remember coming back to New York City, where I, where I now work, and people being like, um, why are you inviting us to dinner all the time? People in New York don't really do that when they don't know each other. Um, and that having been a symptom of just the incredible hospitality and kindness that I was met with. Um, I learned a lot about uh, citizenship education and about um, how teachers teach in India, and that's actually very instrumental to what I started doing when I came back, which is to work um, in at, at first for an education nonprofit, the National Foundation for Teaching Entrepreneurship, um, and now I actually work for Teach for America um, on our teacher training team. So um, my end goal is to, if anyone can believe it, be a television writer. 
um, which doesn't maybe have much to do with my time in India, except that it probably does, um, because I, I so closely and so dearly feel that um, who I am today is a direct result of. Hi, I'm Patrick. I was a fellow in 2004 and 2005. Uh, I was in Madurai in Tamil Nadu in the south. Um, I guess unlike the other two who've spoken, I didn't have a previous connection to India. Uh, I'd never been there. I'd never studied there, studied India. Um, I went there to work with a human rights organization um, and had an, an amazing year. It's proven a, a lasting connection and um, in, a truly formative experience in this, in the course of um, you know, where I've been since then. Uh, the tsunami hit while I was in India and because I was in the south, uh, while the organization that I worked with wasn't a humanitarian organization, <coughs> it uh, turned itself into one for the, for the period immediately after the tsunami and um, that really transfer, transformed the work that I was involved in while I was there and um, the experience that I had overall, and also it was an opportunity to see how NGOs respond in that type of climate uh, in a way that I think you can only, may only happen in a kind of an emergency context. Um, both, I think, the, the way in which they leapt into action, because in India the response was actually um, very comprehensive, but also the way in which every organization really tried to, at least in the South, tried to uh, turn itself into a tsunami relief organization. So you saw a lot about how the funding and um, the way in which these organizations live from grant to grant operated kind of um, with all the potential sources and the great, huge inflow of, of money that came into the region. Um, more broadly, the organization I worked at focused on police torture, caste discrimination, um, other human rights issues that remain uh, kind of on the radar today. I'm sure Yale will be seeing plenty of while she's there. Uh, since coming back, I uh, went to law school and now work uh, as a clerk on the Court of Appeals here in New York. And I have to say that ta taking a year uh, to be abroad and to be somewhere else before law school made all the difference. Sun, New York, in my